Hey, everybody, and welcome to The Tatiana Show. Today is February 13th, Heartbreakers, tomorrow's Valentine's Day, and I'm here in San Francisco at my friend's apartment broadcasting to you live. Um, it's uh, I'm over near the Presidio, so I'll, maybe I'll go for a little walk afterward. Today I'm wearing a uh, Tatiana Rose original shirt available now during my crowdfunding campaign with Tatiana Coin. You can find out everything you need to know on TatianaCoin.com. Um, I'm joined today with my good friend Josh from Voltaro. Josh, how are you today? What's going on, bud? Oh, working like crazy. Techstars is, uh, you know, we, Voltaro got into Techstars, uh, my company, and it's great seeing Bitcoin uh, being invested in again, and not just only blockchain stuff. So, um, so actual Bitcoin companies. So, yeah, it's it's very exciting. It's exhausting, but it's amazing. Uh, and I'm totally super excited about Tatiana Coin coming out as Thank well. You. That's you know, it's been a long time in the making. You are really a pioneer in the whole industry of liberating artists from uh, from these clutches of these uh, these record labels that have really uh, really controlled the game for so long, and people go, oh, you know, uh, you know, artists don't get paid if you're stealing the music and all this stuff. But really, the big problem was that even if the artist got paid, it was like a little tiny handful out of the millions of amazing artists out there. Um, uh, and so you're coming along and allowing a new type of uh, funding model for artists, which not only allows people to take part and own a little piece of the artist, but also um, be able to unlock amazing little things like uh, uh, cheaper tickets or inter interviews or uh, direct contact to you. And it's, it's such a, such a uh, really cool idea and, uh, and I really wish you all the best. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, that very excessive long compliment. Um, I wouldn't have given it to myself, but you've done the selling for me. Am I paying you commission or something? <laughs> um, no, it's, it's literally a very cool <laughs> idea because it's not this like pump and dump type of coin. It's not like a coin where you just buy fa a fake coin. It's literally, if you like an artist, it's not like you're going to get rich off a coin. You, you, buy, you, you buy the token or you get some token when you buy an album or you, you just it helps you crowdfund the next project that you do but instead of just sending money to you and getting maybe an album you also get a, a cryptographic token that you can use to unlock things in the future and trade if you want to and, and i think it's a really really interesting idea well i'm excited about it you know we just launched it last week on the 9th at the blockchain event down in fort lauderdale so it's hanging out with shadan from chain of points and um david wax new wax and pr and so we did this uh this event down there so that was really cool i gave a presentation about token.fm which they're not really launching until the end of march early april but it was it was cool and there was this one guy in the audience who was kind of really giving everybody a hard time and I was expecting a hard time but he really really liked it so um, I don't know it's glad to see that people see the utility and also understand the importance of free speech for artists because you know mm -hmm. if there's only one kind of artist being made then there's nothing no variety to kind of push things forward so I appreciate that I'm excited um, so yeah, people, if they're wondering if they want to find out more, they can go to TatianaCoin.com and you can buy your own Tatiana Coins or you can buy prizes and uh, spread the news. Um, we have a lot of stuff going on today. I'm very excited. You know, oh, by the way, I'm going to be having a lot of music guests over the upcoming month. So we're going to get uh, Benji Rogers from the Dot Blockchain Project, which I thought is really cool. Um, right Adam Levine from Tokenly, we're going to get him on here, Courtney Harding. Um, Megan Wright, um, but you know what was cool over the weekend was that I was on, so Sovereign Tech is a good friend of the show, um, Brian Sovereign, and I was just on Sovereign Tech over the weekend, so we had a really good episode, so if people want to check it out, they can go to SovereignTech.com, Sovereign with a Y awesome. uh, in there, Sovereign. So um, I'm excited for our first guest because um, Bill Barheit reached out to me probably, I don't know, in sometime uh, the end of last year. And he wanted to tell me about what Abra was. And I was not really very familiar. And when he told me, I've been going around telling everybody about it because I think it's a super cool invention. And mm. it solves a lot of problems. Fingers crossed. I hope it does. And he's going to tell us all about it. So uh, let's bring our first guest of the show, uh, Bill Barheit. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Pleasure very to happy to, to see you here. Yes, I was so impressed with our call that time. 
And um, for people who don't know what ABRA is, maybe you could give me you know, a little overview before we dive right in. Sure. So the idea behind ABRA is super simple. We wanted to have a, a single uh, smartphone application that would allow you to send money between any two phone numbers in the world. So take what you know from using Venmo in the US or Paytm in India or WePay in, in China, but whose apps all work in one country, right, and have a single app that can work anywhere. So if you're in the US and you're sending money to a phone number in, in Italy, you send dollars, that phone number automatically receives euros. And to accomplish all this magic, we basically use uh, Bitcoin and blockchain tech, but in a way that completely uh, hides the complexity of the technology and puts it in the background. So the consumer is actually using Bitcoin in most cases and doesn't even know it. Uh, they're basically holding a Bitcoin wallet, but if they're holding dollars, the value of the Bitcoin is fixed to the dollar, and then using uh, blockchain tech, the, the, the amount can be uh, exchanged in whatever wallet currency any other ever uses holding anywhere in the world. So that allows people to do P2P uh, transfers globally. They'll take any money on and off the phone. Basically, we allow any ABRA user to basically become an ATM machine for every other ABRA user. So that means that your ABRA app can process deposits and withdrawals for any other ABRA app. And we call that function um, the ABRA teller. And uh, that allows cash users to get money on and off in, in, different, in different countries in their local currency or in, in different currencies. I'll explain, I'll explain that later. And then in, in the US and the Philippines, we're also testing uh, bank rails for buying and selling the digital cash on and off your phone. So that means you can ACH the money on and off your Abra app if you're in the US, and we hope to roll that out in, in, in more countries this year. But we're primarily focused on, on the cash consumer uh, right now. And one yeah, of the really cool- work? Oh, go ahead, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't cut you off. No, so one of the, the really cool features that we're, we're launching when we flip the switch globally in the next, um, next week or so is this idea of a Bitcoin user being able to use Abra to send money to somebody who has no idea what Bitcoin is. Mm -hmm. right, so that's a perfect use case probably for this audience, right? So, so I've been espousing the, the tenets of Bitcoin from the hilltops and, and everybody's giving me you know, the glossy look where they're looking at the white wall behind me, but now you can actually send them Bitcoin and say, hey, just set up your Abra wallet in dollars and you're gonna receive money and you're not even gonna realize until afterwards, I just sent you Bitcoin and you didn't even know it. And, and I think that's one of the really cool things about this is it's going to allow this whole kind of global evangelistic audience of, of Bitcoin users to show their friends now that they can use this tech in a way that's as easy as, you know, as, as, as typing an email, right? Uh, and, and so I think for the first time, and by the way, it works the other way too. So if you're sending dollars to somebody and you want to receive Bitcoin, you as the sender won't even know that the recipient received receive Bitcoin. So it works in, in, in both ways. That's part of what we're uh, launching when we flip the switch globally here. So back to your question about the tellers and how that works. So if you have the Abra app installed, uh, you have the option of going to the menu function and, and registering to become an Abra teller. It's like if you're using the Uber app, inside the Uber app, you can, you can register to become a driver. And they'll contact you and set you up, provision you, and probably test you that you uh, have a real driver's license and that you've never been arrested and all that other stuff. So, so once you become provisioned to become an Abra teller, you show up in, in the map as being a teller in the area that you registered. So I'm here in Mountain View, so I could register as being a teller in Mountain View and somebody who's looking on the map, they would find Bill and they would say, oh, so Bill basically buys and sells digital cash on the app and he charges the following fee. He charges 1%, uh, maybe or 1.5% and a fixed fee of a dollar. Right, so regardless of, even if you do a $5 transaction, I might charge you a minimum of, minimum of $1 to make it worth my while, for But example. if you have to leave your house, isn't that, you know, what if I only want to cash out $100, so then that would only be a dollar, and I'm not gonna to want to leave my house in order to do that, so. so it, it, it depends on the market, right? So in the US, um, we see people doing this for higher dollar amounts, for sure. India, China, Mexico, Huge Philippines, huge markets where fifty dollars is a big deal, right? And so we see people meeting in coffee shops, doing uh, transactions from their local convenience store that they own, where they have an Android phone sitting on the counter, and it's basically found money, right? Because if I make a dollar on a transaction at a huge margin, 
and I can do that all day, and it's just found money, in, in those, let's call them for lack of a better term, developing markets, like I said, that's a big deal. So each country will have a different model for this, but you know, it, it, it works everywhere. It just may work in slightly different ways with a slightly different uh, average you know, amount in different countries. Right? So, um, uh, uh, just wondering, what, what happens if the Bitcoin uh, network, you know, it's filling up, it's getting, sometimes gets a lot of traffic, the, and, uh, and we're, we're still trying to develop the scaling solutions as a community. What, sure. what do you, how do you deal with that when sometimes a, a transaction takes maybe 12 hours to confirm? Yeah, for sure. So, so we're, we're really smart about this from a consumer experience perspective as well as what's going on in the background. So let me address both. From a consumer experience perspective, if I send money to you, my phone is effectively publishing a transaction to the blockchain. You don't have to know that, but that's basically what's happening. So the recipients get the notification to their app immediately, in real time, right? Via Android push or, or iOS push. So they'll see a note that says, okay, if I just sent you $50, your balance is now 50, but you, you don't have any available balance yet because the transaction hasn't been accepted by the network, which means you know going through a certain number of block cycles where the transaction has been accepted. And, and, so, and then that's the consumer-facing piece, so that at least the recipient knows that the money has been received. And that's similar, like if you're in the US and you get a bank wire, you may get a notification in your, bank, in, in your online banking session that says you've received this money, but it's not yet available to you. So the consumer experience is, is a little similar to what bank consumers might already, um, already know. Then in the background, what we're doing is, is we're looking at what's happening with mining fees uh, at any given time and, and network saturation and, and working with the nodes that we publish to to make sure that we're, we're optimized to make sure that these transactions get accepted fairly quickly. And, and I'll be honest with you, in our testing of thousands of transactions, we, we haven't had a problem with it. But, but Abra can make the problem a self-fulfilling prophecy if we're hugely successful, and and as a result, we're big proponents of of the solutions that are on the table, you know, SegWit and other things, to make sure that 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 the scaling as the broader community hopes it does is is mm. yes yeah. Um, so <clears throat> to people, I've heard that this is actually sort of a behavior pattern that people already have in other cultures. They yeah. have these kinds of money changers. So I guess that that in America is not so common, but that that goes on in other places. Where have you kind of heard this and where is this popular? There's, there's a couple of different um, uh, anecdotes to make your point, right? So the first is air, air, wireless airtime. In the US, most people have a contract now to use their smartphone, but in most countries, that's not the case, right? You, you're, you're buying prepaid environments. So we estimate there's somewhere between, it's a huge, ridiculous number, between 20 and 40 million people all over the world selling wireless airtime to make small amounts of money, right? Whether it's in a mom and pop style convenience store or on the street. I've seen this happen in third world countries where there literally will be people on the street, like in Haiti, when I ran the foundation there, people who will be wearing the red Digicel vests and selling you airtime for literally a dollar a pop. And, and so, the buying and selling of digital currency is actually very similar to that. Then there's the, the mobile money schemes, like you, I'm sure you're familiar with that, heard, or heard of M-Pesa in Kenya uh, and, and other mobile money schemes that are largely cash driven, and those airtime agents are now doing full bank transactions, right? This happens uh, with Smart and Globe Money in the Philippines, for example, where there's thousands of agents, in Kenya where there's tens if not hundreds of thousands of agents, and different countries have variations of this. Um, and then there's the local Bitcoin, model which is much closer to, to our, our, our business but is, is much you know is much more overt in terms of the technology requirements for trading uh, Bitcoin uh, and those numbers have been going up and to the right in an amazing fashion pretty much unabated for, for, for three years now mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if you looked at the China numbers but with everything going on there the numbers were up I think 4x from last week alone uh, and, and so those people are really important because they give us an initial uh, teller community that's highly motivated and highly incentivized to make our work. So we've been very engaged with that, with that community as well. So there's lots of examples of, of where trading happens on the ground, whether it's airtime or uh, mobile money or Bitcoin or whatever. So, so what, what has your projection been? You've been, been 
it's been incubating for a while, right? Yeah. So, so we're very careful about this because Abra, now, in, from a technology perspective, what the consumer is holding is a non-custodial digital currency wallet. And one of the implications of that is I have no access to your money, right? It's your money on your phone. So it's very important that this works the way we say it does. So we've been very careful about the deployment. Uh, we've been testing this in the U.S. and the Philippines for several months. Uh, in the next, like I said, days, uh, we're flipping the switch uh, globally. Um, the system will be available in 50 currencies, but available in every country in the world, minus the, the, the U.S. sanctioned countries, of course. Um, and, and so it's been a methodical march to, to get to this point, and we have a lot of work to do. Our, our roadmap for this year is, one, it's, it's super cool and, and, and has a lot of amazing stuff, but it's keeping our team quite, quite busy. So, so while we are flipping the switch, it's yet just one more step in, in the march to being able to send money between any two phone numbers in the world with minimal friction. And, and so we need to get thousands and thousands and thousands of tellers live. Think of it like a marketplace, right? If you launch Uber in a city and you don't find any drivers, well, it's not a good experience. So you have to focus on a, a modicum of supply in each geography in order for the demand to have a good experience. And all marketplaces go through that. Abra just happens to be a marketplace for money. A lot of cycles figuring out how to marry the, the supply and demand aspects of the, of the marketplace, um, knowing that once the system's out there, I can't stop you from sending it to a phone number in a certain country. At least the minimum of tellers live in the places where it makes the most sense uh, as, as quickly as possible, but with a very high quality experience. And, and the quality and quantity in marketplaces are often at odds with each other, right? And, and you, you may have read some of the, the things that, that Airbnb talked about in the early days about doing things that don't scale. And, and that's just the nature of, of getting the early customers to have a good experience in, in marketplaces. Uh, and, and so anyway, so sorry for the long ramble, but it's a long, a long march towards, towards getting this live uh, globally. So you got funded 12, 12 million back in 2015. Is that, uh, is that something you're going to put boots on the ground with uh, in 51 countries? <laughs> it's a lot of expansion. Yeah, we've actually going to focus on a few countries. Yeah, we actually raised a lot more money than we announced, and, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it today. But we're well funded. Um, we've, got, we've got cash in the bank to get this thing live. Um, we'll have strategic boots on the ground, and we do now in, in, in a few different countries, uh, from a business development perspective, training some of our larger retail teller partners as opposed to just the individual tellers. Um, but, but by and large, we're concentrated in, in Mountain View and, and treating this like a, like a global marketplace using you know, disruptive internet technology. So, so uh, while there will be more and more boots on the ground in different markets over time, uh, right now it's mostly about product and tech. Have you guys partnered with anybody in the Bitcoin space at all, or has it just been your own uh, initiative kind of trying to go outward instead of kind of networking within the community before hitting the road? Yeah, I, we have a few people, including myself, who are very active in the background, the Bitcoin community, um, very active, and, and we want to be really good stewards of the community, everything from, you know, scaling issues that, that you brought up uh, to, um, you know, what are the best practices, uh, security wallets versus exchanges. Uh, anyway, constantly involved in, in these discussions and meetings. Um, from a partnership perspective, we have not, um, we have not done anything uh, of, of any large scale with any, any, anybody else in the space. We're open to it, but right now we're so focused on just getting out alive um, that you know, we need to we need to get our own business uh, going first. So, um, what are the first areas that you think that you're going to put your um, your concentration in? Is it just across the board, or do you have kind of areas that you're concentrating in? Yeah, yeah. So, there's a couple of things we're doing, right? So, good question. So, first, um, on the local kind of individual teller front, meaning I have a smartphone and I want to become an average teller. We're getting a lot of inbound interest from people who are Bitcoin traders to become average tellers. Now, this is extremely complicated because, as I said, the consumer doesn't have to know anything about Bitcoin. So let me give you a use case that we're actually deploying with Bitcoin traders. And we have a community team um, that's talking to literally hundreds of them and, and is onboarding them, again, in a process that's not dissimilar to the Uber driver onboarding process. So I'm in Argentina. And I have, I'm a Bitcoin trader in Argentina, as an example. 
Now, as a consumer, it might behoove me right now to hold dollars on my phone as opposed to Argentinian pesos because I may believe that the value of my pesos would be falling at 1% a week, so I'd rather use Abra in dollars. But every once in a while, I need to get pesos in my hand, right, as opposed to dollars. So how would I do that? Well, if I go up to an Abra teller and I want to make a withdrawal, right, I can tell the teller, hey, you don't even know what's on my phone. You don't know that I'm holding dollars. But I want to withdraw a certain, let's say, 5,000 pesos. I'm sorry, I apologize to you. I don't know how many dollars that is in dollars. But if I want to withdraw 5,000 pesos, what's going to happen is, is the teller app will make a request from my phone, right, which will convert the request to dollars. Teller doesn't even know it. And the consumer doesn't know that the teller is holding Bitcoin. The teller app will then convert that to Argentinian pesos minus their fee and hand the pesos to the consumer. So what you just did is you just did a dual real-time foreign exchange conversion from digital dollars to Bitcoin out to pesos and neither the consumer or the teller knew anything about the complexity of what was going on behind the scenes to make that happen. And the advantage, why should the local Bitcoin trader, the cash trader in Bitcoin, care about this? Well, right now, while that market is going up and to the right, and I'm a huge fan of what they've accomplished as a network, um, it's, only, it's limited to people who only know what Bitcoin is. Trade Bitcoin with somebody who you know wants to trade a Bitcoin. Well, what I just did with the example that I gave you is I opened up that Bitcoin trading audience to every consumer in the world who's never even heard of Bitcoin. Because if I need to basically get dollars off my phone in the form of pesos, I didn't even know that Bitcoin was involved, or I didn't have to. If I did, it's fine, but I didn't have to. So now you've taken that audience of Bitcoin to Bitcoin traders, and you've now opened it up to Bitcoin to fiat, right, in a way that magnifies the, the potential for their business um, thousandsfold. And so the people that are involved in that trading have figured this out and are saying, wow, Abra, you know, you, you, you have the potential here to make me a lot more money than what I'm currently making just as a trader. So how are people going to learn about it, though? I mean, I, I like so many things about this, but how do you think that, um, or do you think it's going to be the traders that are going to set the trail ablaze, so to speak, and then other people will follow? I, I do. I think there's a few different things. Um, I think it's, it, there's a, look, there's a lot of speaking. There's a lot of PR. It's conversations like this, which we love. We love talking about the humanitarian aspects of this, no doubt. But there's no silver bullet, right? It's, it's one teller at a time, it's one trader at a time, it's one transaction at a time. It's, uh, you know, Brian Chesky from Airbnb calls this doing a thousand, thousand small things a thousand times. It's like compounded interest, right? So you, you have to do these small things at that over and over and over and over again to get the flywheel moving. Uh, and, you know, as a CEO, you have, to, you have to manage your cash, you have to get the right people in place to do it, and you have to do all those things in parallel in the background that the consumer doesn't care about. Uh, and 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 that's what we're doing. So so yeah, I think it's going to be um, a lot of a lot of traders basically trying to open this up to people who may just be you know investing in Bitcoin for the first time. People who want to basically send small dollar amounts, right? So one of the advantages of the Abra model is is that you would never use a, a bank wire to send twenty five dollars because it would cost you twenty, or or it may even cost you twenty five dollars to send twenty five dollars. Well, with Abra. You know, that cross-border tr uh, transfer is free. So I, I perceive a lot of people testing Abra with the $10 to $50 transaction that's completely untenable using, um, you know, bank uh, networks right now because of the fees. What sort of KYC do you need to, like, let's say I want to send some money to the Philippines. How, how yeah. do I, yeah, what sort of KYC do I need and where, where do I start? Right. So think of the Abra system as being rules-based. So whether it's a teller or um, you're using our ACH, it, every touch point in the network will have rules. So in most countries, the buying and selling of, of Bitcoin, for example, for cash is not regulated. So there's probably minimal to no KYC requirement there. Um, in the US, FinCEN does regulate um, buying and selling of digital currency as, as, an MS, as a money service business. And so tellers are probably obligated then to register with FinCEN and, check IDs and, and it turns out that there's lots and lots of local Bitcoin traders who have registered with FinCEN and, and are now, you know, writing down and checking IDs and, and, you know, in some cases keeping the transaction volume under a certain amount so that they don't have to, you know, file reports or if they do, they're filing SARS or whatever. Mm. Uh, every country has a different set of requirements 
And you know, Abra basically will work with all of our partners on the ground to make sure that they're you know in a position to uh, to follow their own requirements uh, in their own markets. And and you've got a map on the website, I presume, of places near you that I can go to and deposit. It, it, it's in the app. So if you're using the Abra app, right? So right now, where the the app is is being used in the Philippines, if you if you go to the teller function in the map by pressing you know, deposit cash or withdraw cash, and you scroll over to the Philippines, and you just move the map anywhere in the country and redo the search, you're going to see tellers everywhere. Great. Uh, and so our goal is to take that model and, and, and blow it up for the whole planet. Good. Sounds Back amazing. All. All right. Doesn't it sound cool? I feel like it's yeah. going to make things a lot easier. I'm, I'm very excited about this. So when can people start actually doing this? Because the deployment, I, I think you guys made a big announcement in Miami. Um, so tell me, you know, Abra in Q1 of 2017, what, what can we expect? So look at the next, um, you know, certainly in February, but, but sooner uh, for the app to be uh, updated so that it works in 50 currencies and is live everywhere. People in the U.S. can, can use it in dollars now. Uh, people in the Philippines can use it in pesos now, but like I said, in the next uh, certainly next couple of weeks, you'll be able to, to use it um, globally in, in one of 50 currencies. Um, we're turning on now individual tellers uh, in different countries, so people can ping me. Uh, if you register in the app and you're particularly a Bitcoin trader and you want to move to the front of the line, uh, just ping me on Twitter uh, or ping Abra on Twitter and, and let us know. Uh, and we're giving preference to those people because we know they bring good liquidity into the system. Uh, and they know what they're doing. They're, they're used to operating in a cash business. Uh, and, and so our, our focus in Q1 is getting more and more of that uh, liquidity going uh, with, with, with more of these tellers in different markets. And again, but with a high quality uh, user experience. And, and so you know, that's going to take us certainly through Q1 and beyond. And um, you know, we have more product announcements planned uh, throughout the year, which I won't, I won't bore you to hear your viewership with now. Um, well, we'll have to have you back on to talk about them. So I can download it. Is it just for Android or is it iOS too? No, it's Android, iOS. You can download it now. Uh, oh, rock and roll. Where do I go to? Go to the app stores and search for Abra uh, and, and you'll find it. Uh, okay. And, uh, Doing it as yeah. we speak. You'll see the app updates uh, over the next, like I said, couple of weeks when we flip the switch on, on, uh, on going live and, and multiple currencies. You can also change your currency from within the app. So if you're holding... If you download the app now and register in dollars and you just want called to use Abra, the app, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yep. yep. So you can even register in dollars now and change your currency um, to pesos or euros or something else later on. One question that I have is: Can you save? Like, can I can I put money into into the network and like how long do I have to pick it up? No. So it's a wallet. So I mean, you can hold. Okay. It on the phone as long as you want. Uh, you know, we're marketing it primarily as a, a money transfer vehicle, but if, if you want to hold the app, your, your currency in dollars or euros or Bitcoin, it's fine with us. And whose balance sheet is that? Is that on the trader's balance sheet then? As, as you're holding it. It's, it's, it's the equivalent mm -hmm. of having a, you have a private key that points to a contingent of, of, of Bitcoin that you are holding. Even if it's dollars, uh, it's basically hedged Bitcoin fixed in dollars, so wow. it's your personal balance sheet. You've become your own bank, effectively. Okay. Very cool. Uh, I, there's a lot of stuff I'm not quite getting on about this because it, it's it's a, like it's blowing my mind. Like the hedging concept. How yeah. how the heck one is the, the Bitcoin hedged? One of the breakthroughs of Abra is that we figured out for people who really want to hold dollars but take advantage of our system, how to fix the value of Bitcoin in fiat. Uh, and, and we'll be publishing some blog that apologizes to the community. I've been talking about this for a while, but we've just been so busy getting this live, I haven't gotten to it yet. But we'll be talking more publicly about how we do that. And it's, it really is cool how it works. It's, it's not meant to be uh, you know, front and center that the consumer has to understand that. Just like when you swipe a credit card, you don't know what's happening behind the scenes. You just know that it works. So the hedging model for Abra is meant to be that simple from a consumer-facing perspective, but what's happening in the background is, is, is somewhat complex. But is there a cost to the hedging? I mean, if the longer there you is, hold it, it's hedging in the now, background. If the consumer is not taking any any volatility risk, 
Um, but there is a cost to Abra for that, and we bear that cost, which is offset by us making money on the foreign exchange. Whenever you use Abra to move money between dollars and euros, Abra makes a small amount of money, which generates a small profit for Abra and offsets the cost of the hedging. But if you use it to send money from dollars to dollars, we don't make money on that transaction, and we're perfectly okay with that, um, knowing that at scale we add the most value in cross-border transactions anyway. Nice, nice, and get the network effect. And yeah, and hopefully everybody will. <laughs> so. uh -huh. All right. Well, I like this. Trash, do you have any more questions? I have so many questions. It's, uh, okay, it's, well, it's an amazing, it's an, <laughs> but. I'm but like, how, what are you working as for? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to have um, uh, we'll have to see him again, I think, to to, to answer more of my questions because I, I I would just like to see once once this is out, um, I'd like to see where where this is going and Bill's uh, I'm sure will come back on and explain all the all the the KPIs and how it's growing because this is super exciting. I mean, really blowing my mind actually. I, I, too many questions. I don't want to. I, yeah, I thought it was really cool when I heard about it. So, uh, Bill, we wish you and your team a lot of luck. This is sort of, I think, of a little bit of a team Bitcoin project. So I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, where can people catch up with you online just before you go? Yeah, so I'm on Twitter at Bill Barright. Just Bill Barright, one word, and they can um, follow Abra at Abra Global on Twitter. Uh, we're very active. Um, like I said, we want to be fantastic stewards of the Bitcoin community and help make it useful for, for a few billion people. So yeah, join the conversation online, please. Awesome, all right, well thanks very much for joining us. Uh, we're about to bring up our second guest, but I wanted to thank a few of our sponsors. Mm. What did you think of that, Josh, by the way? That was pretty awesome, right? Yeah, I, I really, really, I've always thought, you know, Bitcoin is, is something to use for the end consumer and, some, and, not, and, and hide it. I mean, why does it need, even need to be shown? You know, we, we don't go and, and command line TCP IP anymore. You know, we, we look at websites and in the background, all this magic is happening and that's exactly how Bill's uh, conquering his side of the world. Uh, I like it. That. It's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, our sponsors, we've got some amazing sponsors, folks, and I, I cannot rave about them enough. If there's <laughs> one, if there's one person, person you need to go to if you're, if you're doing your taxes, especially if you've been hit with the whole uh, IRS Coinbase fiasco, then uh, go see the Bitcoin CPA. He, uh, you know, he has been specializing in Bitcoin taxes for a very long time, written a fantastic book about it if you want to get your heads around, head around it. Uh, go see the Bitcoin CPA. Also, Crypto Compare. Tatiana, wait, wait, what do you before think we that? move on, before we move on, I also want to give a special shout out to Kirk because he gave me my first big donation with the Tatiana Coin Project and he deserves some special recognition. He um, donated $750 for a hangout at the recording studio with me. So, you know, he gets to basically sit in on a recording studio session, you know, we'll order some dinner and hang out and basically have a session. So I thought, I think it's a cool prize, but I'm also really glad that he's going to do that. It turns out he um, has a creative background and he is a, he makes fine wooden furniture or he used wow. to do it before he started saving us all from the, from the tax man. Look folks, if there's one thing I've learned in life, it's find yourself a creative accountant and there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> that was very slick. Uh, what about our friends over at Crypto Compare? They're building us a Tatiana Show website right now. Really? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a website called the Tatiana Show dot com. Uh, there's something up there right now, but it's not very good. So if people go up there um, right now, don't expect the world, the sun, and moon and stars, but it will be ready in the next week or so. So that'll be cool. Um, and Crypto Compare, just to say, tell people what it is. It's a, a fantastic sure. site. If you've got a whole bunch of coins and tokens and all, you can check the price and compare each one. We even at Voltoro, um, they've taken our price feed, so Voltoro is a gold marketplace between Bitcoin and gold, uh, physical gold that's sitting in Swiss vault, and they've taken that uh, price feed and you can compare every price of every old to, to US dollars, to gold now, to, to everything, so you can really keep a track of your your, um, your, your holdings um, and your savings, and it's, it's a really great site for traders and for savers. I like it. Um, okay, we have our friends over at freeross.org. Don't forget, Ross Holbrook uh, drew my 
beautiful image for my birthday, and I decided to use yeah. it as an album cover for Keep the Faith, which is out March 31st. If you want to find out about Ross, go to freeross.org. And uh, let's save the other sponsors for later, because now it's getting a little bit long, and I'm excited for yeah. our next guest. Yes. Joaquin de Koning is somebody I met over on the beautiful platform of LinkedIn. Uh, but he's working on something really neat. And uh, it's a little more technical, so Josh, you'll probably have more questions than I do. I'll, I'll kind of let you guys talk, and I'll let you know when it doesn't make sense, because not all of our listeners are crypto experts, and they don't need to worry about all that. But there are a lot of great possibilities. So without further ado, let's bring on our next guest. Joaquin, join the show. Veal Hi. Uh, hi, yeah, how are you? Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good um, here in the Netherlands. Uh, next to me here is uh, Robert. Uh, he's currently... Uh, working on stuff. Uh, he's my co-founder. Uh, yeah, is no. he made of light? Is he God? No, he's, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it would be nice if he was, but uh, <laughs> there he is. Uh. <laughs> um, so I'm putting the light right, back. Right, so right. So, so why don't you give us, dark. Let, let, give, us the, give us the pitch. Give us the elevator pitch. What is the Internet of Coins? Yeah, the Internet of Coins is an environment for personal finance. It's actually crypto personal finance because we're not focused on fiat money. Uh, so what we're doing is we're creating an environment that basically anyone can just log into and it's going to be completely decentralized. And then they have an overview of all their cryptocurrencies. But not just that, they can also trade them amongst each other uh, uh, without having to go through any central middleman. And uh, now you can you can say, okay, yeah, that's already been done. And that's true, because if you look at like great initiatives like BitSquare, um, you can see that there's already trading uh, possibilities. So what we want to do is take it a step further. We want to make it very easy for people to switch between these cryptocurrencies and make sure that they don't have to worry about things like order books or liquidity, which in, in the decentralized exchanges is currently still an issue. So uh, yeah, we're going to make it possible to trade digital assets and currencies completely peer-to-peer -peer, with an easy-to-use wow. interface and the opportunity to earn fees by participating as an allocator in the network. So how fast is this? Like, what if, like when Mt. Gox happened, me and my brother, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I lost a lot of money in Mt. Gox. The first thing I just sat down and, and tried to figure out how to build a decentralized exchange. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, at the time, the op code, the return codes weren't, everything, the technically, it just wasn't, wasn't really ready and and it was going to be too slow how, mm -hmm. how are you dealing with the lag the, uh, of the network um, are you are you basing it on the Bitcoin blockchain is there another blockchain what, what's going on there? Uh, we've created something called a transactional operating system and it's a system that runs uh, a type of chain system called a weave chain and it's basically different than, than a blockchain because um, it, it doesn't continue to grow in size but it's like a FIFO system. So things can go in in the front and be verified by, by means of consensus, but also data that is no longer utilized for a long time gets pushed out of the back. So uh, there have been models in the past like this. If you look at, for example, Freenet, uh, you see that also it's being done there, uh, like a cache system or BitMessage also does that. So it's not completely new. And what we want to do with that is make sure that all these blockchain ledgers that do keep their data which for a good reason is being done for financial transactions. It's very important to keep that data, but that they are connected together, but that we don't add to the weight of storage, uh, but instead make it faster. So WeaveChain has a lot of these threads walking next to each other, like a lot of these chains that have a FIFO in and out system. And, uh, and they're being hashed by, by a central uh, type of um, a thread, as it were, a strand. And it's, it's a decentralized system. So I'm, I'm, when I say central, it's like it's a core strand that hashes the rest of these strands and keeps them together. But just like the other strands, it, it just pushes the data out when it's no longer necessary out of the back. So, so let's, let's just bring it back to normal person language, uh, like yeah, actual yeah. use case. Because if we, if we delve in the background there, you're going to lose a lot of people. And I, and I think it's super fascinating. But I'd like to know, like, Step by step, how do I go about this? What do I do? I download a wallet, I download a, something, and I upload. Where, where do I go? How do I do this? I've got some, uh, well, I've got some Litecoin and I want Bitcoin. Yeah, current, currently we're in alpha testing, but when we bring out the beta, you can basically just go to a website and log in deterministically, and your browser becomes a node at that moment. When you say so deterministically, your browser, you're, you're saying with a, with a 12 
12 word seed or something like that so it's always the same is that correct well deterministically means that we don't need to store any of your login data or authentication data so right. this is not a new thing either this concept is already being proven in bitcoin itself if you have a deterministic wallet you can log into something and your uh, credentials at that moment your in that sense your key becomes uh, the key to your uh, uh, ecosystem your environment at that moment so at that okay. moment you can create transactions in your browser cool and and, yeah. and then and then the idea is that you see all these cryptocurrencies you can choose which ones you want to use um you can choose your favorite ones so we're going to look at uh, the ux experience to make it very easy and if you want to switch a cryptocurrency from one to the other uh, you basically don't have to look at order books or set prices. You just say, okay, I want to convert so many of these cryptocurrencies into another type. And it just can be done by the click of a button. So we want to make it real simple. Uh, and uh, the liquidity aspect we're looking at, uh, which is currently a problem on the decentralized exchanges, is uh, that we use a mechanism uh, that is called allocation. And uh, it's, it's interesting because when I looked at Abra, uh, they, they're using something that they call tellers. And what we're doing looks very much like it, but we do it between multiple cryptocurrencies. So we're not we're not uh, using fiat currencies in this case, um, but it looks very much uh, alike. And so I thought it was very nice, uh, very interesting to see that. And um, mm. yeah, so I, I'm very interested also in, in Abra, and I think I will also start uh, trying that out. But yeah, uh, yeah but as for Internet of Coins, uh, we will uh, we will be working this. Uh, from a uh, perspective of um, a not-for-profit. So, so our approach is really doing this uh, from the, uh, a more grassroots perspective to try and, and uh, include uh, every potential cryptocurrency user, but also every current cryptocurrency user into being able to use the platform. So is this effectively a decentralized shapeshift? Uh, yeah, it has. We we have been compared to Shapeshift in an article, uh, but uh, it does. Yeah, it does look like decentralized Shapeshift in that sense. Um, uh, of course, in our case, uh, what will be interesting is it, it's just like Bitcoin. It will be a bit of an experiment because uh, doing this in a decentralized fashion, uh, 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 like we're doing with allocation, has not been done yet. So we have to find out. Okay, is it going to work as intended? Or are we also going to run into liquidity problems like other DEXs have had? And so, you know, we're just kind of trying to approach this from a realistic perspective. Um, so we've, we've been working on, on the uh, decentralized transactional operating system for two years. And now wow. we're doing our first alpha tests with uh, a group uh, that have eco villages here in the Netherlands. And they don't want oh, to work wow. with money. So they're not interested yeah. in, in, in euros. They want to work with cryptocurrencies only. And so Fantastic. they're a very interesting test group because they just want to try it out and see can they actually buy and sell stuff with it in the community. That's great. And, and how are you funded? Uh, well, we, we, we paid our way a, a lot of this ourselves. And we've had uh, a grant from a Dutch organization in the Netherlands. They're called SIDN. Uh, and uh, they're the SIDN fund. They've been uh, funding projects that keep the internet a free place. Um, and so we, we got a grant from them. And uh, th that's helped us along a little bit. Um, and now uh, we are also looking for, uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're now also doing a fundraiser to try and get the project uh, up to a higher scale to, to make sure that we can quickly bring out this uh, UI also to, to make people use it. Great. Well, Tatiana, this is, uh, my God. Isn't the Every world time, I, just, Bitcoin just for the, the, the people. <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin for the win. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's really phenomenal. So, so how open is this to to how many how many currency pairs? Uh, we're going to try and include every single cryptocurrency that is there, and we don't need to make any changes to any wallets. So, so um, uh, groups that have created their own cryptocurrency don't have to change their wallets. So, it, it, we want to try and create an, an environment like. Uh, the internet was in the beginning where you could just spin up a website if you wanted. In this case, you can spin up a coin if you want and just uh, offer it on uh, on basically on a decentralized financial web. Um, so, the so thing is, though, Tatiana that coin, Tatiana coins based on uh, the, counterparty. Uh, the counterparty <laughs> protocol. Is, yeah, is yeah. that, uh, yeah, so that, that'll work. So, if a coin's based on something slightly different, um, say, uh, I don't know. Monero or something like that, will uh, it'll still work? 
it will still work. Yeah, we, we are going to include every strange, weird type of cryptocurrency, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, Bitcoin and all its derivatives uh, uh, actually have not been the most difficult one. There are also methods to swap between those, like atomic transactions that we can use in the, in the Internet of Coins system. It's great. Um, and for others, BitSquare has been developing some interesting ways to swap coins as well. So we're just integrating all these methods uh, to make them offered from, from one platform, from one easy way to do it. But for uh, some cryptocurrencies, we have developed a method called Haystack. And it's, uh, it's going to be used to, to make sure you can switch between very odd types of combinations that until now have not yet been possible to do. Haystack and Weave Chains, how do you come up with these names? Uh, well, uh, the, the Weave Chains, basically what we, what we saw is as, uh, if you have a, a multiple blockchain system that just keeps on developing, uh, it's, it's like a, a woven thing. So yeah, that's right. kind of how we just uh, we started calling it that. <laughs> nice, nice. Oops, there goes my telephone. Um, um, so how many people are on your team right now? Right now we have a team of 10 people and the alpha test group is about 50 people. Very cool. That's Josh, really I feel cool. like so this when is more people... complicated stuff. <laughs> you must have more questions than I do. How, okay, no, no wait, like... actually that, that lends us to, a, a, to an interesting question. How would a regular person even know about this? Why would they care? Uh, well, if, if they're uh, completely not interested in, in cryptocurrency, truthfully, they might not even care. But what we want to, uh, to find out is how can we get more and more people interested in cryptocurrency? So uh, Bitcoin itself, there have been a lot of interesting applications that have tried to draw people into the Bitcoin ecosystem. And, uh, and I think that's a good thing. And with, with Internet of Coins, we want to do the same thing but for, for a lot of cryptocurrencies. Uh, we also want to create an environment in which cryptocurrencies could, as it were, be rated so that you can see which ones are, 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 you know, uh, are actually being innovative uh, compared to what Bitcoin has done as well, which is, is, I think, the most innovative cryptocurrency to date. So we've seen a lot of things uh, being developed in, in, in the uh, crypto sphere, as I call it, and, and a lot of developments and ideas. But some of them also have been blatant scams, and it would be nice that that people can just, uh, with by rating these cryptocurrencies, can say, "Well, I like this one, but I don't like that one." And then in our system, you can also see warnings uh, with certain coins that are definitely, you know, not going to be uh, of of much use to people because they are basically pump and dump scams. So we want to find out, like, how can we make this uh, uh, easy for someone to understand who who doesn't have time to read through all the forums and all the information that's out there. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And uh, how long does a trade typically, how long will it take? So if, I, if I'm trading from one coin to another, what sort of time scale are we looking at? Well, currently uh, in what we've made until now, if you, if you uh, exchange, for example, between Bitcoin and Monero, uh, you're dependent on the blockchain time of, of the slowest uh, chain. So if, for example, if we don't use Lightning, which currently we're not doing yet with Bitcoin, uh, then it would take approximately 10 minutes to have a completely verified uh, interledger transaction. But with other cryptocurrencies, the block time is a lot faster. So you could say, hey, well, that's not very fast, and that's right. Uh, that's something we're working on, but our first goal is to just make it work it's set by itself and make sure it's possible. Uh, so for extreme speeds, you know, people will still have to go to the exchanges at this moment. But I do think that, uh, that the speed will increase uh, as we keep on developing. And that uh, also uh, that will become less of an issue in, into the future. Yeah, and I think I mean you have to wait uh, to load an exchange anyway. Um, although you know once it's there, you can keep trading. And uh, it carries great. its own risk. That's true. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly. It, it absolutely does. Um, yeah. Wow, well, uh, I'm 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 blown away. Thank you very much. It's uh, it, there's there's. Uh, so much innovation happening in this space. It, it's really such an amazing time to, to, to witness all of this happening. Um, where, where can people find out more about this? Who, who can they follow? Uh, currently, we have uh, our website is coinstorm.net, which is that, that it's our campaign website. And we have more information also on internetofcoins.org. Uh, which is uh, 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 the website we've already had for a longer time uh, where we post more general information and also blogs. Great stuff. Awesome.
I like this. We'll be sharing about the uh, about both these projects, I think, on social media and stuff. And people are uh, at home listening to this. You can just click on the descriptions. The show actually airs on Liberty.me, LRN.fm, uh, IPM Nation. I actually just uh, joined Matt on the show there last week, and also Let's Talk Bitcoin. So. Joaquim, you are our lucky victim for a Valentine's victory. Um, I was thinking we should have some sort of a phrase related to the date and then crypto. I need a magic phrase, basically, for Let's Talk Bitcoin. Give me one. You could tie <laughs> mm -hmm. it back to your thing. Well, uh, <laughs> a Valentine's phrase you're asking for. No, it doesn't need to. Well, I don't know. I'm just thinking tomorrow's a day. We should make it thematic or we can make it about Bitcoin as usual that would be so original compared to all the other magic phrases that haven't related mm -hmm, to Bitcoin mm -hmm. <laughs> come on pick out something for us well I'd say yeah. love crypto more than 14 times so if tomorrow is the 14th <laughs> then keep loving crypto and do your best to make it a better place okay so that was the longest phrase ever we needed to be like three words I love, love oh, crypto, three words. I Love crypto 14 times. I like that. Yes, and then and 14 yes. times will be 14x. So we're going to try and make it a little bit tricky for our for our listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you on our many travels. Um, everybody, please keep watching Tatiana's show. Remember, Sovereign Tech, awesome tech show. You could hear me on it. I just did an appearance this weekend. I think he related it back to solving the Bowie problem, which I was very honored to be in such good company. Um, mm. We also have good friends over at thirdkey.solutions. Uh, Pamela Morgan has this company and they do third key solutions, but really what I love about Pamela is the way that she explains the use of um, blockchain, Bitcoin, and how to set us free in terms of justice, right? Because if we don't have justice, we don't have anything, which brings us back to free Ross. Quick shout out. Also, cryptomediahub.com if you guys want to know about advertising or marketing to the space, that's uh, my company got Voltoro.com and don't forget the most important thing which is tatianacoin.com I'm running a big campaign if you've enjoyed this show if you've enjoyed my music this is the time to dig deep in your pockets and get your own piece of Tatiana coin this is not a speculative investment this is an investment of the heart and uh, if you're going to Narcopulco in a couple weeks use Tatiana save 10% we will see you later this week possibly guys I might do a little sneak episode we've got some really great um, uh, people coming on guests over the next few weeks. So thank you all for listening. Mwah! Peace out. Have Valentine's out. Day. Happy, Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Love. Yeah. Love. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. Yo. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye.